morning, sixth graders. We are going to start our third lesson in chapter one of our Bible workbook, and we are continuing to talk about God's plan and what God's plan is for us as human beings on the earth. Um, I want to ask you a question. I want you to think about it for a minute. Have you ever seen a movie that was about the end of the world? Maybe um, a movie about an asteroid hitting Earth, or maybe you've seen Planet of the Apes, or I don't know. But if you've ever seen a movie like that, I want you to think about how, um, how you felt. How did the characters in that movie feel? about it being the end of the world, and how did you feel about watching that movie? The reason I want you to think about that is because we know as Christians that this world is going to end, right? This world isn't all there is, and because of that, we have a unique perspective. If you are someone who has received the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ, then this is actually something that you don't need to be afraid of. You don't need to fear. Um, I could tell you a story about somebody. I know uh, my mama passed away from ALS uh, several years ago, and when she got her diagnosis of this disease, I got to be with her at the doctor, and she said to me, she said, Rachel, I'm not afraid of dying because I know what's waiting for me on the other side. It's the getting to the dying that scares me. She was afraid that she was going to be a burden on her family and she didn't want that. But the actual dying part didn't scare her at all. She looked straight at death and said, bring it on because she was a Christian and she understood that there was a place being prepared for her where she was going to get to go. And so when you're a Christian, the end of the story, the end of the narrative, doesn't have to be scary for you because we know if everything, if this is a battle, right, we've already won. Jesus has already won. Um, just a little bit of a review. Okay, so going back, we know that... Um, Jesus, the coming of the Messiah, was foretold back in Genesis 3.15. We know that the nation that was prepared to bring the Messiah into the world, that was the nation of Israel. We know that Jesus himself was revealed in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We know that the, the church began during the book of Acts, and we know that Acts reveals more about that to us. We know that the epistles, those are the letters, reveal more to us about Jesus and about how he wants us to live. The completion of God's work is written about in the very last book of the Bible, and that book is called Revelation. And some of you may have read it, and if you have, you're probably there are probably things that confused you. Um, things maybe you didn't understand, and that's okay, because a lot of revelation is symbolic, and um, the main thing I think you need to understand about the book of Revelation is that God wins. Jesus wins. That there's no um, fear about the end for people who follow Jesus Christ. And so if you get out your Bible, if you don't have your Bible out, pause this video and go get your Bible and your workbook and kind of take a look at Revelation. It's, it's uh, 22 chapters. They're not terribly long chapters. You could probably sit down and read the whole book of Revelation um, in an hour or two, depending on how fast of a reader you are. But Revelation is a really interesting book, and a lot of people really get bogged down in all the details of it. But like I said, the main thing that you need to know about Revelation is that John, the Apostle John, was writing it to Christians to be a comfort to them, to help them understand that God has already won this battle, and that no matter what they went through in their lives, 
God had already won. He had already taken care of it. If you go to, um, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17. And I want you to look at verse 14. Revelation 17 says, the 17, 14 says, these will wage war against the Lamb. The Lamb is Jesus. He's described as the Lamb of God. These will wage war against the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them, because He is the Lord of lords and the King of kings, and those who are with Him are called chosen and faithful. And then in Revelation chapter 19, verse 6, most of you will just have to turn over a page or two, it says, then I heard something like the voice of a great multitude and like the sound of many waters and like the sound of mighty peals of thunder saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. And so in these two verses, we understand that the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings is Jesus, the Lamb of God, and that he is the one that is being worshipped. Now, if you remember when we talked very briefly about Israel leaving Egypt and how they had to paint the doorposts of their houses with the lamb's blood, um, and Jesus is called our lamb, our sacrificial lamb, because he died for us. So just like the Passover lamb's blood protected the Hebrew slaves from physical death, the blood of Jesus protects us from spiritual death. From eternal death we don't have to go anywhere but heaven if we follow Jesus and we choose to accept that gift of salvation from him we get to go to heaven and we don't have to be worried when we die our physical death it's just the next adventure after that that we get to be a part of Romans 6 23 talks about that how how the penalty for sin is death and how that's been paid by Jesus. He is the Lamb on the throne of heaven. And Revelation 7, 9, this is one of my very, very favorite verses in the whole Bible, to be honest. Um, I mean, there's you'll hear me say that a lot. This is my favorite verse. This is my favorite verse. This really is one of my favorite verses because it talks about um, how people are going to come together how unity is going to happen among people who know the Lord. It says, After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, and all tribes, and all peoples, and all tongues, that means languages, standing before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, and palm branches were in their hands. And then verse 10, They cry out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. Salvation is open to anybody. It doesn't matter what country you're from. It doesn't matter what language you speak. It doesn't matter what color your skin is. Some of the things that people think matter don't matter to God at all. It doesn't matter to him. Everyone is welcome. And Revelation is very clear that people from every tribe, every nation will be joining in that song of praise to God. God's plan includes redeeming people from the consequences of their sins so that they can have a relationship with God. But it also involves redeeming the earth. Now, what that's going to look like, I don't know. But in Genesis chapter 3, one of the, the consequences of Adam and Eve's sin was that the ground would be cursed, that farming would be difficult. If you can read that in Genesis chapter 3, 17 um, through, through 19. But in Revelation 21, um, it talks about a new heaven and a new earth. Revelation chapter 21, verses um, 1 through 7, uh, says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth passed away, and there is no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride, adorned for her husband. And if you keep reading, there's so much good stuff in here. 
For instance, um, verse 3 says that, that God will dwell among them and they will be his people. Verse 4 says that God himself will wipe away every tear from their eyes, that there won't be any more death, no more mourning, no more, no more crying, no more pain. And then verse 5 says, He who sits on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. So what that looks like, I don't know. I don't know what the new earth is. is. Does that mean that God's going to like actually physically make another earth? Does that mean that the new earth is, is heaven, that, that he's just called, that's just what he called heaven, and it's symbolic? I don't know. Um, that really doesn't ultimately matter in the end, because I trust God to do what's right. What matters is, is that I understand that this broken world and my broken self are going to be made new and whole and perfect through the sacrifice of Jesus. And when he comes back, all of the stuff that, 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 that was bad about this world isn't going to exist anymore. And for me, that is probably one of my favorite things um, about this. Uh, another little story to tell you about my family. My older sister is deaf. She has never heard anything. And she has said that one of, one of the things she's most looking forward to about heaven is that her broken ears will work and she'll be able to hear music for the first time when she goes to heaven. And so when we talk about making all things new, it's really true. God is going to fix everything that's broken, whether that's destroying it and rebuilding it, whether that's fixing it where it is. I don't know. I do know and I trust God when he says that there will be no more mourning, no more crying, and no more pain. And that is probably why uh, I love Revelation so much is because it gives us even more of that hope and that joy in Christ Jesus. So let's talk for a minute about your workbook. Um, I want you to open your workbook to page three and I want you to take a look at that. Now you may in your Bible have a concordance. My Bible has a concordance in the back. It's not a very big one but I do have a concordance in the back of my Bible, and you probably have one in the back of yours, too. Most Bibles have them. Bigger study Bibles will have bigger, better concordances. You can actually um, buy a concordance. Um, if you choose to buy one, a complete concordance, what they call an exhaustive concordance, um, make sure it's for the version, the translation that you have. Um, because if you have a New American Standard Bible, which is what I think I, we asked everybody to have so that we would all have the same version of the Bible, the same translation, um, and you get a concordance for the King James Version, it's not going to be exactly what you need. But a concordance is uh, kind of like a dictionary. It's arranged like a dictionary. It's in alphabetical order. But it's a list of words that appear in the Bible and every verse that contains them. So, like, I'm just, I've just opened my concordance, and let's say I want to know, um, I, I want to look up some verses on faith. So just like the dictionary, I would go to the F section, which will be right after the E, right before the G, and I will look up faith, and I will find it, and I will see that in my concordance, which is not a complete concordance, it has probably 20 different verses that have the word faith in them. Now, if you look at your, your workbook on page 3, you will see that there is sort of a sampling of concordance here. And so you've got crown, you've got the word eternal, and you've got um, the word lamb, and the phrase, Lamb of God. Now, um, I want you to notice, um, take a look real quick under crown, the very first one that it says is Psalm 132, 18, upon himself his C. That means crown. So instead of writing crown in everything, they'll just have the C there. And it would be the same for eternal. So it would be E. And for Lamb, it would be L. So you're going to use that little partial concordance on page 3 to answer these questions, questions 1 through 10. This one should be just a little bit easier for you than yesterday's 
there are no opinion questions on this. All you have to do is look up these Bible verses and figure out which one it's talking about in each question. If you have any questions, you or your parents can always email me. That is absolutely fine. If you really get stuck on something, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Remember that we will turn these all in at the same time before the test, and I can help you go over some of those things if you need my help. Tomorrow, we'll be doing lesson 1.4. I am hoping maybe we'll be back to school on Friday. Maybe, I don't know. Um, if we are, I will see you then. If we're not, I will see you Monday. And my plan is, normally we have chapel on Fridays. So my plan is 1.4 tomorrow and then nothing on Friday because we usually have chapel. I want you, if we're at home, I want you to spend that time maybe singing or reading your Bible, worshiping God. And then um, on Monday, that will be our review day. And so our test for lesson one will be on Tuesday. So I will see you with a new video tomorrow and maybe in person on Friday. Have a great day.